My name's Casey, I'm Deputy Superintendent, City of Westfield Public Works. This is our foreman, Eric Lacombe. We're, we're a few years in the works here in getting into brine treatment on our roads. Uh, so we've bought our own brine generator. Uh, Innovative Surface Solutions is the vendor. We buy their Magic Minus Zero product. So the Magic Minus Zero is corrosion prevention. Um, it's got a, it's a molasses magnesium chloride blend. So it's corrosion preventative, and it also helps the salt that we put down on the roads bind to the roads. We'll mix our brine, 30% magic minus zero, 70% brine that we've generated, and we'll actually use that for direct liquid application on our roads, which we've done today in advance of the anticipated uh, one inch snowfall that we expect to see tonight. You need a, a pretty good sized footprint for the operation, 30 to 40 feet. We all know the impact of sand in the ecosystem. That we've removed from our process, moved to salt, and now we're taking the salt and trying to reduce it. This is an organic material, the uh, Magic O, that's what the molasses are for. It helps the freeze point of the salt be lower, so it works longer, better, faster. It helps stick the salt to the ground, reduces the scatter, keeps it out of the catch basins, keeps it on the road where it needs to be used. We're wetting the salt at the spinner on the truck. So when I say spinner, everybody's been behind a salt truck where it's throwing the salt everywhere. Well, this goes on the salt and when it's wet, it won't bounce as much and it keeps it on the road, the scatter. So this is one of the uh, direct liquid application trucks. Um, the body, we switch out, you know, so we can multi-purpose the, the truck. But we've got it set up right now for direct liquid applications, which we are treating all of our made roads in advance of tonight's storm. We basically drive around with a spray bar. This has a 925 gallon capacity so that you don't need a tanker endorsement to drive the vehicle due to the weight and the volume of uh, liquids on it. We can go out three days ahead of time as long as it's not gonna rain and there's favorable conditions. So it helps out with our time management, with our uh, employees. We can utilize them in other areas instead of having to have, you know, 13 trucks and 13 employees out there for the whole day. We can send out two or three trucks and have them out there for one day. So we are reduced carbon emissions by not having as many vehicles on the road. Um, there's, there's nothing but positives about this. We've had no negatives yet, um, no negative feedback from citizens. We're in motion with it, you know, we're, we're still expanding. We still have more to do with it to get completely up there. We're trying to save, you know, taxpayer dollars uh, by being more efficient with the salt we use. And we're trying to save the environment by putting less salt and less product out there. So we're trying to protect the watershed as well. Correct. So there is a very big cost savings by making your own. So the cost of this brine generator, the yellow, uh, this is over here. It's about 28 to $30,000. Um, short of having the electrician come in that we have a staff electrician to run a power drop to it. And we already had our water line set up um, for filling our, um, our sewer flush truck and trailer. So we use a refined salt, which is solar salt. It's not mined. It's a little more pure, less dirt and stuff in it. Basically, you put the salt in the hopper up here. You obviously have water supply to it, and you basically turn the machine on. So you want to take this, pull up on it, there we go. twist it, that, then we'll go in and we'll open up the tank and turn on the pump. I don't and then just turn the pump on. Yeah, we're all set. I think they got a 7,000 gallon minimum. It takes minimum about 15 delivery. minutes or so for it to fill up. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Fran Keynes. I'm acting director of DPW. This is um, this whole process has been something that we've looked at for a, a, a number of years, and I'd say this year is the first year that we've really taken it to the level that we're at. We're constantly learning and evolving on it, and this is, has been a great step so far. And we've, the results that you know, Eric has seen um, so far has proved out what we thought it would be, and um, it can only get better from here. Stuff has been around for 25 plus years, you know. Um, there's lots of communities within this state that have really up-to-date up to snow and ice programs, specifically liquid uh, 
application. So it, it's out there. The data's out there. And it's kind of, it's just, it's one of your tools. I mean, there's many ways you need to fight it. And sometimes that is going to have to be old school, putting straight salt down or whatever. But you need to, need to have kind of your Swiss Army knife of, of tools. Every product has a purpose. And this is just another product that we can utilize. Is it correct in every scenario? No. If it was zero degrees out today and the road temperature wasn't cooperating, we would not be out there with liquid because that can go backwards on you. So one of the values is the time savings with the DLA. And that's because we can apply the material to the road at real time, real speed, 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, where if you're out spreading your salt, you need to be under 15 miles an hour, 20 the maximum, so that you don't have your scatter. It's another tool in your belt. I mean, I've been going to classes for almost three years to get to where I'm comfortable with sending this material out on the road. Right. All right. And, and being able to, you know, state to these guys, this is how we're doing it. Because, exactly. You know, and I think a lot of times too, you know, the whole more is better, scenario, you know, kind of mindset and, well, uh, we got ice, we got this and just dump whatever you got to do to, to, you know, fight the battle at hand. And sometimes that, you know, comes back to, to haunt you. And you think back in the days of sand, where the sand went down, was sand effective and did it give uh, traction? Sure. But then all the side effects from the sand, the wear and tear on the cars and machinery, and then the fact that now the ice event or snow event is gone and, you know, within a, a couple of days and then all that product is just laying in the side of the road, essentially doing nothing. It, and, the, and it's going to become a huge environmental, uh, you know, situation because you would need the buy in of the end users, you know, the, the DPWs of the towns you're kind of going to, you know, want to bring in. Is, uh, do they have an interest? Is it something they want to do? That's what kind of needs to happen. So I think you would need to have kind of an education of those folks and get their buy into it. Otherwise it just falls, you know, cause all it takes is a few naysayers to say, well, that doesn't work. That rots the trucks out more. And most of that is lack of knowledge and education, you know, application and execution and not the product.